up, monsters? Sam Healy here with Monster Fight Club. My co-worker Dan Shillary and I wanted to put together a short series of videos as we go through and paint some cyberpunk red combat zone miniatures for you. Now the two goals we have in making these videos are first of all to show you some awesome miniatures that are in our cyberpunk red combat zone line. The second is to simply show you how easy and fun it can be to paint miniatures that will look great on the table with just a little bit of practice. So starting today, Dan's going to be painting for you the Onisan miniature from the Tiger Claw Gang. And I'll be painting the Warlord miniature from the Maelstrom Gang, both of which are within that Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone line. So without further ado, let's get painting. Hello, my name is Dan with Monster Fight Club, and today we're going to be painting Onisan, a gang member from the Tiger Claw faction from Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone. So to start with the base paints, we're going to be doing Cadian Flesh Tone for her skin and Corvus Black for her hair and her undershirt. Next we'll have Cantor Blue, and this is a good vibrant blue base color here for her jeans. And what I'm working on is trying to get solid coverage here, and don't worry if it gets too messy, you can touch it up with other base colors the more you add on to the model. The next paint we're going to be adding is Nagaroth Knight. This is a good purple base color here, and I wanted to have it, it's a good contrast against her skin and also the blue of her pants. But we're just trying to get a smooth layer here across her jacket. We're also going to use it on her boots as well. Trying to avoid different places that we're going to use different colors for, you know, metallics and, and other brighter colors, but still trying to get that even coverage across the entire model. The next color we switch to is Iron Hand Steel. This is for metallic trim around her boots and also for the gun casing. Before switching over to Mephiston Red. Now this is just another accent color here. She's got a little katana on her belt here. I thought that would make a nice little pop against the purple and the blue. I also decided to put a trim around the jacket because these models have a ton of detail. So putting these different colors in different places really brings them to life. Now we switch to Emperor's Children Pink. This is a great neon color here. Again, good contrast against the blue and purple, but giving you that neon cyberpunk feel that you see in so much of the artwork in the game. So a couple details around the jacket here, the trim, but predominantly on the knee pads. Painted it onto her ponytail. And it's pretty much done for the base coats. So we switched over to covering the entire model with Agrax Earthshade. And this is a great shade to put onto a model because it really brings it to life. It ties all the colors in together there for you. It darkens things down and gives it that more realistic feel. But the next step here is going back to all the base colors that you had already previously used and just bringing the original colors back up onto the model. So you're leaving the darker recesses in the, in the creases of her jacket or her pants or along her facial features, but ultimately you're bringing these colors back to vibrancy. You can see here using the Emperor's Children again, leaving it only on certain parts of the flat patches of the armor to give that actually metallic feel like it's shining in neon. Retouching up the jacket to bring it back to life. And also the Nagaroth Knight, again, on 90% of the, the model, still leaving that darker recesses, gives that three-dimensional feel, gives it that realistic look to it. But you can see the model's really, really coming together just by using the base colors and just a simple layer of wash. We're touching up the red of the katana and the red trim of the jacket, just being careful, trying to get that texture feel of the several dots put together. Retouching up the gun casing with the same iron hand steel gives that two-toned effect here, which makes it feel more realistic. A little bit of Xandra dust on her pouch. And then we're going to put some white on the jacket trim and also the white for her eyes. Now, eyes are very difficult here. You may not even need to use them. Majority of the models don't need to have the eyes, it, but it's a, a nice feature to have if you are good with it. Then I decided to highlight the jacket and the pants a little bit more. So I went to Caldor Sky with the blue, going for the highest points of the pants, the, the creases and the flat patches, and then also Jean Steeler purple on the jacket here just to give it that three-dimensional color, that neon light feel that she's in a, you know, a brightly lit city. Coming across the boots here with the same way we just did with the jacket, blending it all together. And the last thing I do is kind of touch up the eyes here a little bit, reshape them with the Cadian flesh tone, put on a little dab up for her pupil, 
and that's pretty much done for Oni Summit. Hey folks, this is Sam. Like I said, I'm painting the Warlord miniature from the Maelstrom gang, and this is in our Cyberpunk Red Combat Zone game. So uh, the first uh, little skin tone that I brought up here is actually a blend of uniform gray, tanned flesh, and a little bit of army green in there. I just wanted to get it as close to uh, the artist rendering as I possibly could. And really, like Dan said, we're just talking about covering as much of that uh, upper torso and arms as we possibly can in this first base coat so that um, we can get all that coverage. The pants were done in a just regular army green. Uh, wanted to do that as kind of a uniform for all of the models in the Maelstrom game that I painted, but uh, it's just regular army green, just as much coverage as we can. This is just a matte black that I'm using for his boots. And again, we're just looking for coverage. We're trying to be a little careful uh, as we get up close to that army green color because we don't want to have to come back and do too much touch-ups. I did use it also as a base for the hammer, uh, his weapon of choice there, so that's pretty cool. After that, I went to some gun metal to do the chains that are around his waist and some of the other uh, highlights of the model. There's parts of the top of the boot that uh, needed to be done in uh, this metal color. Also part of his uh, uh, sidearm there. So just a little bit of the touch-ups that uh, we, we want to look for as we're trying to make the model as unique as we can make it. We also used that gunmetal uh, for the hammer, and I just did the entire hammer and gunmetal, uh, so it, it, it wasn't that bad. Then I also used gunmetal as a base for all of the armor plating that he has on his chest, uh, neck area, arms, and on the back as well. This guy is really tricked out with a lot of armor plating, so uh, there was a lot of time spent uh, making sure that I kind of got a good coverage of the different armor plates that are there but i didn't want to cover up all of his torso because i wanted to show that these are kind of implants that are on his skin and body that it's it's it, he just doesn't have a metal body or or he's not in armor plating or anything like that these are actual implants that are on his his body so i wanted to show that now I'm just using a strong tone from uh, Army Painters Quick Shades, and this is just, like Dan said, to pull all those colors together uh, and to kind of settle into those recesses so there's, there's a good shading effect that's going on there. And with this, you, you, you can be as liberal as you want. You don't want to put too much uh, of the shade on the model. Uh, but you do want to kind of move it around and stuff like that. After that, I dried it with a hair dryer uh, so that it would dry quickly. You do have to make sure that those shades are dry before I uh, go back and put in all of those different highlights that are there. Now, I didn't show all of those, but I did use some dragon red and pure red for the red highlights to make those pop. And then I also went over those gunmetal parts with uh, plate mail metal to make sure that those popped as well. And that's pretty much it for the Warlord from the Maelstrom Gang. So that's about it for our video today. We wanted to thank you for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. But on top of that, we are gonna be doing a couple more of these videos. So keep your ear to the ground for when those are gonna be coming out here on our YouTube channel. In the meantime, hopefully we'll see you around. We do have a Discord channel with which we're going to be trying to engage our community a little bit more heavily in the near future. And check out our web store. We've got a lot of great products there. We'll see you around. See you on the flip side, folks.